It is a great privilege for me to be in this audience, this, this uh, memorial today with this distinguished company in remembrance of my friend, Professor Milton Friedman, who generously mentored me and the Fraser Institute. For most people in the world, the very best way to remember Milton is simply to look around. From Mongolia to Manitoba, from Reykjavik to Cape Town, from Sydney to Beijing, and in every nook and cranny of the former Soviet Union, the ideas of Milton Friedman inform and enthuse the economic policies that are transforming the world and eradicating poverty at an unprecedented rate. Free to Choose, the book written by Milton and his brilliant wife, Rose, has been the handbook for reformers and national leaders in dozens of languages. You really can't think about Milton without thinking about Rose. Rose, who has been the enabler, <clears throat> the critic, the instigator, the radical, and the moderator of their very joint effort to change the world. Rose, who has made everyone more relaxed in approaching what was undoubtedly one of the greatest intellects in the history of the human race. The last time I was with Milton, two weeks before his death, he was then as he always had been, curious, cheerful, combative, and of course resolute. The occasion was a meeting regarding the Milton and Rose D. Friedman Foundation, of which I am privileged to be a director. The business of the foundation was dealt with efficiently and well, but its conduct did not preclude us from having in passing a debate about the merits of naked short selling. <laughs> the discussion reminded me that one of Milton's contributions to the world was his important 1971 paper, which Leo, uh, the creator of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, has noted was crucial in creating the world's largest financial and futures market. How appropriate that Leo is here today. Milton Friedman was a polymath. Students of statistics first encounter him when they calculate an F-test for ranked data. Economic students recognize him for his original contributions to most of the the theoretical underpinnings of both macro and microeconomics, from the theory of capital to the functioning of exchange rates and, of course, the understanding of how consumption behavior and the demand for cash balances interact to spread monetary shocks through the economy. Central bankers pay him homage daily as they monitor the inflation rate as an indicator of monetary policy. Of, of monetary policy. Inflation is a monetary phenomenon. Milton's monetarist mantra was not always the touchstone of monetary policy. In fact, many, such as Canadian economist John Kenneth Galbraith, believed that inflation was caused by wage and other cost pressures and the cure was wage and price controls. Now, while Ken and Milton were friendly acquaintances during the 1970s, that is no surprise, since Milton was friendly to everybody, both the many who opposed his ideas and the few who embraced them. <clears throat> 